Let's do the Manjushri prayer first. Lama dan gombo injin jamba yang la chan tsai lo yin kong ye lo yin tim yin tin da ni da nam da ra sa ve chi yin tin gun chi xin se chi ni jin tu kar le ba Kandai si bin tsun ra mari Min tum tu ngai nji si ve Do tsui kun lai pu jin dar si Yin lai tu ji yang ding zong Do dar nji ro nji mo nji lo Lin-jin-jang-do-in-tron-zin-jing Chu tai chu dai chu ni jin de ta le mun se jam bai yang lai rab du du om arabazana de marabazana de marabaz marabazana de marabazana de marabazana de marabazana de marabazana de marabazana de Umarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamarambazanadiyamaramb
and uh, <clears throat> generally we uh, with this thought we study reflect and meditate on the teaching that tewa chimbil gi chu nyamlen chebala thoma dang bar dang thama sum gi nyamlen na ni thomi nyamlen di changju gi sem gi etire so <clears throat> as for the study of the uh uh, Mahayana Buddhisms, the beginning and the middle and then, then conclusion. The the beginning is uh, generating the Bodhicitta. Then the part of the Naranjogi Nyamli Ngoshi Kari Nangu Natella Mipa Tzeju Tu Nayam. And the Yakshu Chuna Nita Ngoshi Mipa Mipa Sanche. And Tama De Latini Ngoshi Kiti Samba Tisum Tsangku Kure. So then the uh, main body is uh, they are mainly, you know, practicing one pointedly, but at best case, then we may, uh, study the main mm, part of the teachings uh, with a uh, you know non thought, and then at the end we conclude the sessions or the uh, studies with their uh, dedications. Well, so that means that the love joint chain di shirab nimbure shirab nimbu nani yang tini kazingi ta umetin di chambu shiam ngaki kapki ta kamuju la de yire. So, uh, for now, the subject matter is the perfection of the wisdom, parajana paramita, and uh, within this, we have been talking about the five or four uh, great majamaka reasonings. So we are at this point now. Tini Kazing Aranzo, and a Dembar Dribe Chuji Kaling Songwaina, and a Kudan Tiwigi Chawa Chemi Nibi Cortilla, Rigbin Namsha Mambu, Chiguni Kawra. So, in the previous session, we have talked about uh, the causality, the theory of the causality, its fallacy, or uh, does not withstand if we accept. A truly existent phenomena. Tama do kajing tama tama dilla dinishile bala chik to the kabla. Kesi demba ina juro me pa chikora demba sengi di chik ina ya mangbu yonge merara demba sengi di mangbu ina chik shau nugu mara di chik nazo hua lift hua chikor. So then last time at the very end we have come to the discussions. Uh, <coughs> Uh, on the reasonings of refuting uh, singularity and pluralities, that you know, if the truth is, if there is a truth, then it has to be a, a truth that is not changing. And uh, also at the same time, we have to come to the conclusion or the understanding that if the truth is one, then it could sh can't be many. If it's Many, then it can be one. That kind of understanding we should have uh, gained from the last discussions. Tini kap te dugi ta samlo thela tene riba thela tene chue tam jadi jambar shang menu ba ji ngajolo kowa ji nye ngu da. So from those reasonings, we have probably come to the understanding that all phenomena are not truly established. They do not have intrinsic natures. Tawana Naranzo and Tiwas Ligra, Tenny Naranzo, Tabra Chimbi Lula, Tenny Judan Tug Namshati, Shang Nusa Maruas, Judan Tug Namshana, and Kongi, Jun Chazang and Tabra Chimbulayanta, Pabdo Sari, then Tanya Namshatamji, Mabaji Shebu Natini, Chetaro Chatrosari, some began to launch you. So then the at this point a doubt arises, and if we have uh, if the all the the theory of the causalities as uh, through the uh, Majamaka reasoning it does not withstand and it's uh, uh, kind of uh, it's not tenable in its own right then at this point we came to uh, think that you know in this way if we accept this way of uh, reasonings or approach, then we might be uh, falling into the extreme of nihilism. Then the land is the same as 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 the
But then at this point, the answer would be in the Mahayana teachings, we accept the you know theory of the causality in the way of the interdependence, the things are depending on each other. On that basis, then we accept the theory of the causality. Generally, there is a saying that among all the teachers of the time, the the teacher Buddha Shajamuni, he is unique and excellent because he taught the teaching of the interdependence. But then we come to uh, ask, you know, uh, a question to ourselves that what is actually interdependence? So generally, there are two types of uh interdependence interdependence of cause and effect interdependence of uh and then uh, establishing uh, depending on something else so then within the first the interdependence interdependence of cause and effect there are also two subsections interdependence of uh uh external interdependence and the internal interdependence <laughs> So then <clears throat> the external interdependence of the cause and effect, there are also seven points, uh, seven causal points, and uh, six uh, conditional uh, points of factors. So the causal factors, seven causal factors are generally then uh, flowers arising from a seed, so these seven causal factors are just uh, basically the seed uh, transforming into sprout, then sprout transforming into stem, stem transforming into uh, the petals, and the petals transforming into flowers, so forth. In total, there are seven uh, steps or seven factors. And then at the same time, the in the process of these seven fact the seven causal factors, uh, it needs the conditional six conditional factors to develop itself in that uh procedures. So for these six factors are generally the earth. Water, fire, wind, space, time. So this is basically how the external world, the physical world, the external world forms. So then the internal, the interdependence is basically uh, the interdependence we usually count such as ignorance and then uh, consciousness, formations and name and form and sixth sense, so forth mm. to the 
you know the last the twelfth mm. one. So then, you know, uh, uh, from a six sense context, then it's, uh, yeah, then contact and uh, <clears throat> sensations and the grasslings and the creepings and uh, becoming and uh, birth and Old age and death. Mm. So in total, twelve mm. of them. So these are also kind of <clears throat> uh, linked in the principle of the interdependence. They arise in the principle of. Then, uh, so then, uh, interdependence of the uh depending on something else is or kind of imputed interdependence probably that's the better translation imputed trans the interdependence is like you know uh the long thing comes because of there's a short thing and the you know, left the side is because there is a right side mm. So they are basically imputed depending on the other things, depending on something else. But at this point still we might have these doubts of you know through the other reasonings that they cause uh, about cause and effect and the effect just cannot come from causes so we still think this can be applied on still on this you know the interdependence of the phenomena but last time we are mainly uh <coughs> Uh, the kind of uh, applying the reason, the thinking that you know the causes and the effect are truly established phenomena. On that basis, we are reasoning. Hmm. So at this point, now in the uh, in the context of the interdependence and the Majamaga Mahayana uh, Majamaga reasonings, then. We don't really accept all the phenomena as truly established. So then at this point we again come to uh, think for ourselves um, that you know uh, when we uh, when it says that the most essential teachings of the buddha is the uh, interdependence and then the, the uh, among the uh, four noble truth the teaching of the four noble truth the first truth truth of the suffering in that it talks about you know all things are being impermanent so then we come to we will come to kind of uh have these uh doubts mm. uh, so we will come to this uh, doubt between interdependence and impermanence, who are, how they are connected to each other. So, like I said last time, when Buddha started to teach the impermanence, he said, 
at the beginning, everything is interdependent. Kasna di kis mitak ba di sung yun di ta jirwa chen demba maim ba zumba sung shakra. Yeah, uh, when we talk about the imper- impermanence, then impermanence is the things that is always changing. Yeah, uh, it's fleeting, it's transient, and uh, it's false. Tadi zumba ham jirwa chen yirang shin di tenten chakti kiri. This very nature of being false and uh, transient is actually interdependence. That is super nice. Demba ina jirwa me bachi. Kora. If it is true, if there is a truth, then it should be not changing. Actually. All our the experience, the external uh, object and the internal the experience are always changing and at the same time they are interdependence. So then uh, if we ask what is the uh, unique uh, characteristics about this or what is the special things about this? So then we say the essence of this point, the point of the interdependence is uh, not having true or the self, uh, the existence. Yeah, generally, when we uh, dream something while we are sleeping, since it's false, since dream is false, so we can experience any different kind of dream as sometimes you know bad dreams, sometimes good dreams. Kisi milam di ko demba ina. If the dream is truly established, it has the truth in it to truly establish the true existence, then it has to be uh, all the time good, either all the time good or either all the time bad. So then, just like this analogy, so all our experiences, the experience of suffering and the experience of joy, happiness, in the in the you know, in different realms. And this is, is, all of this uh, can be, uh, you know, sometimes good and sometimes bad. Sometimes, yeah, mm-hmm. no. So, since they are not truly established, all our experience, the external and the internal, the external objective experience, the appearances, and then internal subjective experience, all of these are, since they do not have true existence, then they can be, you know, either uh, good and both. Mm-hmm. If they are our experience, if they are truly established, then there should be uh, one thing, either always good or always bad. But that's not the case. Since there's no true existence in any phenomenon, you know, the true intrinsic nature is lacking. So, therefore, they can appear in any forms. So, now we can see there is 
a great connection between impermanence and interdependence. So now we can yeah, talk a little bit about if, if the if <coughs> philosophical tenet system relating to this point. Then did you sing it? Namju Naranzogi, Jidin, Cheba Bochigi, and Sushabare, Sunichira, Wangchu, Tang, Tak, Tang, Takbachi Latin, Keshapachina, Tati Demba in Sonata, Tungan Yong de Tapa, Tungan Yong de Gitan, Tewan Yong de Tapa, Tewan Yong de Gota, did it Demba Chagot, that didn't Yong Mares with that sort. So if we accept something as truly, you know, established, created by a powerful uh, God or Shiva, then it has to be something which is always one thing, such as either good or bad. But that's not the case. You know, things appear in different forms. So, also, uh, <coughs> With the reasoning of the interdependence, we do not uh, accept the creators of the world. And at the same time, we do not uh, accept, with the reasoning of the interdependence, we do not accept the uh, causelessness. We believe that things are caused by something. So and then in this case, what is the actual case, the, the causes? Then uh, it comes to the cause of uh, being first the ignorance and then formation and consciousness so forth and depending on the uh, sentient beings the actions bad action and good action then we get to experience also different the effect or result so the buddhist way of you know the Attaining the uh, the actual the truth or the uh, practicing the path or uh, uh, accumulating merits and uh, 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 wisdom and at the same time the abandoning all the negative action it's based on this uh, the principle of the interdependence. <laughs> So also on the basis of the principle of the emptiness, we are able to realize the meaning of emptiness. Mm. So if we do not accept the <coughs> uh, the meaning or the principle of the impermanence and as well as the uh, the principle of the lack of true existence, then you know uh, things has to be in one way or time like if sentient beings are you know, always sentient beings if we are experiencing happiness then always you know just happiness experience happiness not suffering that uh, at the same time we have to understand that when we talk about impermanence and the interdependence we are not talking something which just comes from nothingness. We are not uh, talking uh, about a theory of the causality which is completely or false and uh, not tenable or not acceptable. 
Tangalu Satangi Samarota, Chotamji Tendi Relegdu, Rangsin Tongbani Relegdu, the Tendi Second Chinangi Nujuni Shagdu, Chinangi Nuju Tangazu Tongudu, that Tendi in by Yim on the Tangshura, Yanaki Rangsin Maduba Tongi Relating as Tongumudu, Karajere, Sayang, Samla Jungura. So at this point, we come to think to ourselves that, uh, you know, they say everything is impermanence, everything is interdependence, everything, you know, in, in interdependence, there is the interdependence of uh, external phenomena and the interdependence of the internal phenomena. And then internal phenomena, <coughs> oh, sorry, the, the external phenomena also uh, comes from uh, the, 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 uh, causes a uh, certain causes uh and so forth so then uh, so at this point then we would think uh but we don't still you know even we come to accept this you know point until this you know uh approach we don't still uh realize the emptiness then we would just think to ourselves why it is that why so we would yeah, think to ourselves that either the emptiness or the lack of true existence we don't really realize it we don't see it why what's what's the uh, the reason so we would think to ourselves as yes so when we talk about uh, interdependence, then we in generally uh, talk about this uh, mm, the ignorance, nature of the ignorance that's being within us. The Maripa second the Kandi so then this ignorance, if we ask uh, ourselves where it comes from, then it comes from you know, the grasping at the true existence of things and grasping at self, the self-clinging. Maybe I can uh, say uh, 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 the, the metaphor or the analogy that will clarify. Yeah, even though things are lacking the true existence, but they may appear as if they are truly established. So Shandarashita in his uh in the ornament of the middle way, Majamaka Lankara, he says, uh if we hold a, a bucket of water, very clean waters, uh, under the moon in the evening, then we will see the moon inside the bucket in the water. So we will all see the moon inside the water in the bucket, right? We also would directly believe that the moon is inside the water. We would just accept that directly. Yeah. We have this latent tendency or the dispositions of you know seeing the moon inside the water and even also believing that you know we are seeing it as it there's a you know moon inside the water and we don't really you know <clears throat> think twice about that and would not doubt anything about that. So, uh, if there were two f uh, friends hanging out in the evening so around the water, and if we ask them to, if they see the moon inside the water in the bucket, they would say yes, they would, they see the moon. 
not only that, uh, maybe, you know, uh, the one person even, you know, uh, explain the moon in even uh, in a greater way, saying that, you know, today's moon inside the bucket is very bright and shapes in this way and that way so forth. But if we actually analyze and search the moon inside the water, do, will we be able to find the moon inside the water? Of course not. We will not find such moon in the water. The moon is not in the water. But even though it's not in the water, but it appears, it may appear. Since it appears in the water, therefore it kind of indicates that the moon is not actually truly established. It it does it doesn't have the true existence. Since the moon inside the water is not uh uh, having the intrinsic nature, the true existence, therefore it you know it you know appears. So the actual uh, the case or the nature is that it is emptiness. The what water the the moon inside the water is emptiness. Since it's not truly established, it doesn't have true existence. Therefore, it can appear in some kind of uh, form which is not true, but false. Then the falsely appearing in the moon, if we do not analyze, then we would just directly accept it as the true moon. But if we analyze, then we don't really find it. So, just like that, all our perception at this moment is, even though they are not uh, truly established, they do not have true existence, but they appear, they may appear. However, even though they appear, if we analyze through the reasoning that it investigates the ultimate truth, then we will not really find the 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 moons or the the ex, our appearances. <laughs> Generally, if we are asked the, uh, how many moons are there in the uh, s space, we would say there is only one. When we see the moon inside the waters, and then we would just, without analyze, analysis, then we would just directly accept it. We would just accept the moon is in the water. So, therefore, just like these analogies, you know, with the ignorance, without the true the wisdoms to see the ultimate uh, truth, the nature of the reality, then we take things for granted that they are actually, you know, there, they are existing. So then for us, for very, very long time, since the very beginnings, we have this habit or the tendency of you know, kind of grasping as true existence, the dualistic perceptions, uh, or 
and their and their fixations. So then we always then take things granted that things are always there. They are always you know existence truly established. You know, and uh, yeah, that kind of belief and habit we always have it. Tangaran so ke chazang ke samlo dilla. Wadi dembare ni thongu du nangu du se ni jumze di shuk chumbu yura. We also have this、uh, dispositions of saying、uh, that、uh, you know they are there because I see them, I hear them, or、uh, they are they they appears there. So. Tangi thongu du nangu du ki yani demba shak thong mundo ape na thegi kong du shupan na shi dawe sunni thongwa de de. However, the our perception that things you know as appears to our perceptions are not or you know、uh, kind of、uh, withstandings or、uh, tenables, just like the analogy of the or the moons in the waters. Even though moon is kind of Appearing, but if we search for it, we don't really find it. So just like that. Tangan zo yang anzu ki kaji shuban na chirol ki nawa thamje tindil ki nawa nangshin ki luwa chen kume rangshin ju tok songai na ta dila shemba kig mare shemba mena teni marik pali thoni teni leeng yamba sai chan zo yang garu ra teni le se songai na teni tharba thamje kime kovang thoi yu kovapju yu dega. So then, if we are able to see all our perception, the appearances are then not truly established, you know,、uh, on the principle of the,、uh, on the basis of the principle of the interdependence, things appears but they do not have true existence. So if we could see it in that way, accept things in that way, then we are able to. Kind of reduce our attachment towards、uh, the phenomena or our grasping towards phenomena, and then at the same time, then we will be able to <coughs> the the gain the higher realizations and attain Buddhahood, so forth. That, eh, that Sanjay Karisunas nandi ra donang la kangshik. Kian li keba tema ke, sekarang tu tanda juging li keba sa syak dua. Di keba korang rancing ke kau yo mari sung, tong ni deh sung. So in sutra Buddha said, everything that are born on the basis of cause and if the the conditions, then they are not actually born. Tapi kau sekarang korang ngau rancing ni dua belas mari sung, cuni lah. So the birth, the concept of birth is also not truly established. That kind of gene like a shape of thumb, the thumb bar is. Then the thumb bar is the rangshin suy toksona. That thing one is the kejo that thumb bar is. Everything that is born or arises, depending on cause and effect, is emptiness. And whoever understands this、uh, truth or the reality, then. The one is, uh, you know, it's able to see the truth. It's it's a realized being. That palin dawe gya sumer. That tenjungi rikpa thegi tawang ngimbi kita mishe patamje ma chom nugre sumer. Also, Chanda Kirti said that the uh the truth of the interdependence is is able to eliminate all the wrong views. Tangan zo. Nangba sangi begi, ta nangba sangi be nane ta uma begi lam le chirul du jur begi lam thamje the ta lam thar du main bachik tenje giri ba tongi giri ba theki tongi giri. Uma le main be. Oh, uma uma main kengi ta thek ba rimba ra chumda giri ba kari shana hai chaza yang ta tenje giri ba tang tongi giri ba theki ani ta lam yang ta main bachik ngodu chungi. Yeah, through the The principle of the interdependence, then we can see the path of the all other tradition except Majjhima tradition, all other you know tradition within Buddhist, uh, uh, the the um, Buddhist uh, schools and as well as non-Buddhist school, all are kind of not complete or false, 
on the basis of the principle of the and uh, the interdependence we can see their approach uh, are not complete approach are not correct approach ta tendi gi ri patela ani nga zo thamje le chu ba tendi chu mu su ra the the reasoning of the uh, uh, interdependence is generally called the great interdependence ta di di khazin khazin nga zo ဒုလကျွပါဒုလကျွပါညီကလကျွပါနိကလကျွပါတင်တိရှိုင်းပါဒီဆိုချာစံကြီးရိပိတ်ကြီးထွေးတီတင်တင်ရင်ပြီးတ
you know, every single phenomena we can name and we can see are uh, a uh, uh, lack of uh, the true existence, the inherent existence. Ta chunyi ni su ngoma khorang dira ta yoba meba niga ni mita ta shi dang ta ke le chawa sha go ra. So then the ultimate in the uh, truth, the nature of the reality itself has to be beyond existence, non-existence, the uh, four or eight extremes of the complexities. It has to be something like that. Yeah. If we speak, uh, put it in a simple words, it has to be, the ultimate truth has to be uh, something which is beyond our conceptual uh, the graspings. So then the uh the uh consciousness or the 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 things the, uh, the wisdom that sees the emptiness is uh, generally called the uh, self-reflexive Okay, so so then this uh, comes to the point that if we do any of the vipassana meditations, and uh, which is based on the uh, principle of the interdependence, then we are actually meditating on uh, something which is false or not true or uh, not having true existence ta lakdong yang da ba tong ba nyem rang sing ma du ba sikin ti ta loi din dang dan tal we ki ta chun ni chik ta nyam ni nang go ra lakdong so then the proper the practice of the vipassana which is beyond uh and the genuine uh, the vipassana practice or the uh, uh, the correct uh, vipassana practice has to be something uh, that is beyond and uh, the conceptual uh, the graspings tene chunyi rangsing gi maduba the gala nyamne nang tu songai na lakthong nang tu songai na tene number nang sha wa khari yo na tigi ta nyog mare if we could base our vipassana practice on the uh, and the the, the uh, lack of the true existence, then whatever things appears, uh, it, you know, all our the external the 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 appearances, they would not really uh, uh, you know, obstacles us. Chalangi, that chalango bodo chik zuma in bahagos na tela shemba dan zimba king marwa. If you you know. Uh, find out that is, things are not having true existence any entity you know if you find them not having true existence then you will not give rise to attachment towards those things so if you f are able to see things are without, then the true existence, things are not truly established on their own way, then oh, we are able to kind of uh, <clears throat> the let go of our and the graspings or the attachment towards the things. So this, uh, you know, lack of, you know, not being able. Oh, I was just, uh, 
luam zumbares that the mebare some mebaj sem like kidney sooner tiang digimare tiang zinan chagre you mean nigal debegita zinan chalashiko so then if we you know, things, things are not truly, all things are not truly established. They do not have true existence. So if we, you know, just contemplate on that, that is also not correct. We are kind of con contemplating on the, uh, then a, something which is not existence. But then that's not our meditation. Our meditation has to be beyond uh, both existence and non-existence. It should not be either on uh, existence things or non-existence things. So those who are practicing the a principle of the emptiness and the truly realized being and the, the, who have been practicing the, the interdependence for many years, then they say, you know, uh, between the two interdependence, interdependence of the cause and effect, interdependence of merely uh, designations, then they say, you know, slowly practicing this, it's for many, uh, for a long time, then slowly they finally come to the later one. The interdependence of the mere destination, that's uh, the, the, the later kind of the uh, destination. That's yeah. If we are able to understand the interdependence of mere destination, then we are much closer to the realization of the ultimate truth. As for instance, these small thing and the big things are uh, uh, imputed depending on uh, kind of uh, yeah, depending on each other. So, yeah. yeah. So the actual the bigness and smallness are not truly established in them. The uh, the bigness and the smallness are not they do not have you know the true existence in themselves. If they are truly established, then they should not be uh, changing. So uh, we call you know that thing is uh, one thing is big and the, the other things is small. If the small one is truly established, then it should always stay as small all the time. It should not uh, be as something big later on. If you know if it has true existence of the smallness, then it has it has to be small all the time. But now it, this has become bigger. The smallness is gone in 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 it. Mm. But you know, it, compared to the smaller one, this then the the other one, the one that we called small earlier, it has become big. If the smallness is truly established in the the in the in the paper in the first place, then it should not, you know, later it won't become big, uh, the bigger. So, you know, uh, these indicates that all our uh, uh, appearances are not truly reliable. So, these uh, kind of boils down to the uh, principle of the impermanence and the interdependence. So the only things we can rely on is the this suchness, the ultimate truth. If we are able to realize the ultimate truth, the suchness, then and then we are free from suffering. 
ता तेन दामबा दि ममा रे दे नयां तेन दामबा तो बड़चे बले कुन सब कि थाबला तु को करता है but uh, to in order to realize the ultimate truth we have to depend on the conventional truth of course ta tun dam bat ton thar chin san ta deni sungju san cha dikas kunjob san kha ga yam bare ta tun dam ma do ge paru tin kunjob gi am tin dil ki kapsa le gunde ki nam cha chok sa tip jang lam tham jal ju ko bare when we complete when we realize when we complete the entire path and then, then realize the ultimate truth uh, you know comes to the point where is where is the you know the union of the two truths then we don't really speak about the uh, some conventional truths but until that we have to depend on the conventional truths conventional truths of you know and gathering virtues or uh, the accumulations and then uh, purifying obscurations so forth all of this we have to do then namju sungira thanyin lani matemba thambe tonni tommi thambe tonni ma to nyange deba tommi jursa sanju gobon thobar chebalen kunjob ki namsha matur wa manor wa chik te goide khejum chage so generally it says uh, without depending on the conventional truths we are unable to realize the ultimate truths without under, uh, realizing or the understanding the ultimate truths then we are unable to then without realizing the the ultimate truths then we won't attain the nirvana ta tik tu dub git tendel yi chek re slai di karsna jugeng git tendel sekin thila tik samla ya bu ta di ko so ta tik ke wit nam sha sekin ti tik tak je matang one shai re mato tak je ngoma ta na ta ke wa sekin sha khal ka bu yung do khajin kal ka bu cha so tendel tendel khoran lai na so uh and the uh principle of the uh, the interdependence if we analyze thoroughly of course then it's uh, very difficult to uh, kind of find the actual the the causes and the the sources of the appearances and uh, just we just have to kind of uh, take things on the first uh, place as how they are otherwise you know if we had to uh, analyze very thoroughly then just like we you know have uh, you know talked about earlier it, it's very difficult to yeah see the the origins of the phenomena ta khordi gnam sha tin ta same jing la tu ni sha wa sam re ma to thung ngoma la ta sin chen ta sin chen ni ma ro rang shi ma tu ba re do khorwa ta nyang di gnam sha chi ro same jing la ki ngola tu ni sha ba re do ti ni ta tu du ki ni cha tu ta ngoma ngoma las so then the concept of the uh nirvana and the existence and the nirvana and the sentient being so forth all are depending on each others and depending on the sentient beings then there's the concept of the uh, samsara and the nirvana and uh, so forth but uh, so it as if within the two uh, the interdependence this is the interdependence you know of the cause and effect so this kind of the interdependence that we experience is cause and effect ta ke je ngoma ngoma di khawa le gris na dikaso chu tam je milam dan juma tau hindi tendil ki number jumba hindi ta dela jumba ma shu dela chaba ma je sungira so the main point is that as uh, you know all phenomena are like mirage and the the dreams and that they are then depending on each others uh, interdependence and they are not do not have true uh the existence or the, the inherently established uh existence so uh therefore we should not uh give rise to kind of conceptual grasping towards the phenomena that's what it that's the main point to chunangi dawa di rangshi me bar tok sabe jela then dawa ning je du sangbu du sang di pezul chig mara ta di chumare sang ju ki ma so once we are able to realize that the, the moons in the water is not truly established then we won't really grasp uh, at the moons that much we want you know kind of uh 
yeah, fixate on the idea of the moon in the water that much. So it's just like that. So uh, seeing the true nature of the old phenomenon, then we, sh you know, our main task is not to uh, fix, you know, give rise to the fixation on them. But since we have this latent tendency since, you know, the very beginnings, you know, we have this uh, uh, habit of, you know, seeing things as uh, truly established for a long, long time. So it's not very easy for us to, you know, immediately, you know, understand the uh, lack of the uh, true existence of the phenomena. But if we are able, once we are able to understand or realize the lack of the true existence of phenomena, then we are, you know, slowly able to kind of <clears throat> Uh, realize the ultimate truth and then be able to uh, yeah, yeah, abide in the equanimity without any uh, fixations or graspings. So today we just roughly uh, spoke about the emptiness and the interdependence, and in a very general way, uh, we are we haven't been able to talk in great details about the uh, emptiness of the cause and effect and and the emptiness of the merely designated and so forth. So, but uh, we time is running out, and we would stop here. Mm. So we have to keep in our mind that since things are empty, that's why they appear. So this very point we have to take to our heart. If things are truly established in their own way from the very beginning, then we won't, we won't see them or we won't experience them. So, <clears throat> uh, the analogy of the moon in the water is very profound and meaningful. So, if you could reflect on this, it will be very, very beneficial. I also spoke in great length about this analogy. Uh, no. So he spoke in the uh, in his commentary of the the ornament of the middle way in a great length. He talked about it. Mm -hmm. So I myself uh, just read about in the the Mepam uh, Rinpoche's way of explaining this, and I felt it's very, very profound in details. And uh, the, this way of establishing the, uh, the lack of true existence in Mepam Rinpoche's way is extremely uh, detailed and uh, uh, very clear. So I... Uh, yeah, I found it. I found that in my, for myself, and so uh, therefore I spoke. Uh, yeah, about this today a little bit. So now we will do the dedication together. So this is the uh, within the Mahayana. Uh, the tradition of the Mahayana Dhamma, the, la, uh, the third, the excellent, the excellent conclusions of the dedication. So when we dedicate, then we generally dedicate uh, our the merits of the three times to all other sentient beings. 
<laughs> so whatever we have uh, learned or studied, we can't really hold it to ourselves. We cannot really grasp towards them. You know, we, they are all already giving away. <laughs> and for instance, if I give some money to someone else, then once it's given out, then I can't really claim it to be mine. I can't say that's my money. I can't really say that. So it's just like that. Once we dedicate, then we just can't really, you know, have grasping towards them. <laughs> so we have to do <laughs> So we just have to and be very calm and easy without a pride and uh, uh, graspings. Yeah. So uh, the most important thing is we should apply our teaching as a remedy for pride. Yeah. Yeah. So like myself and uh, uh, many others so from the studying, if I, uh, you know, get, uh, develop pride, then I have to uh, many times do dedications. Awesome. <laughs> Hone, <laughs> 